back. You're watching Gravitas. Kenyans cast ballots in six different elections today, choosing governors, lawmakers, senators, county officials and women's representatives in local races, also rife with tension. But the focus was the presidential election, pitting two of the most powerful politicians in the country against each other. Here's a report on how the battle shaped up. Millions of Kenyans lined up to vote in an election that was called too close to call. It was a clash between the country's foremost political dynasties. It was a litmus test of Kenya's progress since 2007, when a disputed election sparked two months of violence, leaving 1,100 people dead and 600,000 displaced. It was a race that could potentially plunge East Africa's most crucial economy into chaos. The run-up to the polls was violent. A top election official was murdered just a few days back with the opposition accusing the government of trying to rig the poll, conspiracy and suspicion hung thick in the air. Incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta was pitched against his rival Raila Odinga. The tension was palpable. My competitors, as I have always said, in the event that they lose, let us accept the will of the people. I am willing myself to accept the will of the people, so to them too. Accept the will of the people, let us come together, let us pull this country together and let us move forward as one nation because that's the only way that we can achieve our joint vision for this country. To try to use the security forces to intimidate voters uh, tomorrow. And we say that, for example, in Kisumu already there are some menacing police officers who have been taken there and is saying that all this is aimed at suppressing turnout in our strongholds. At 72, Odinga, the flag bearer of the NASA coalition, a former political prisoner and the son of Kenya's first vice president, was taking his fourth and most probably final shot at the presidency. His opponent, incumbent Kenyatta, a 55-year-old businessman and the son of Kenya's first president, saw a massive infrastructure drive including a train line and a steady economic growth to create jobs. But he was criticized for rising food prices. Odinga and Kenyatta belong to two of Kenya's main ethnic groups. Kenyatta from Kikuyu, the largest, and Odinga from the Luo. Both secured formidable alliances with other influential communities in a country where voting takes place along tribal lines. More than 5,000 observers were deployed. The Election Commission got satellite phones to transmit results from the 11,000-odd polling stations. Two months of campaigning were marked by fiery rhetoric. Public speeches were largely free of ethnic hate, but toxic text messages and flyers made people nervous. With the results out now, Kenyans will be watching the loser as much as the winner, because his actions will determine if the tenuous peace holds. Bureau Report, Vion. Joining us from Nairobi this evening is Salim Amin, the chairman of the Africa 24 Media. Good evening, Salim. Hi, good evening. How is it playing out? Uh, well, it's uh, so far so good. The, the voting has been going very um, smoothly, a little bit slow. Uh, I visited um, about a dozen polling stations uh, around the Nairobi area today, and um, everything was pretty calm. We were there when uh, Raila Odinga cast his vote, and... Um, there was, um, you know, lots of cheering and dancing and singing and everything else, but uh, uh, everything so far seems to be calm. I think uh, uh, the counting has already begun, but I think um, uh, if there's going to be any issues, they will come once the, once the tallying has been done. Someone said that both the candidates are prepared to win, but no one is ready to lose, and that is where the rub lies. We do not know what's going to happen once the result is out. Kenyatta today said that I'm going to accept whatever the verdict of the people is. Uh, do, you, do you take his word? Uh, yeah, I, you know, it's, it's a tough call. It's, it's, um, nobody's ever conceded uh, defeat uh, uh, easily in any of the uh, previous elections. Uh, you mentioned in your report earlier that the, the violence in 2007, uh, 2013 was also hotly contested. Um, so I, I don't, you know, for Rilo Odinga, as, as again you pointed out, this is his last shot. At, um, at this seat because he will be age barred by the constitution um, by the time the next election comes around. So he has very little to lose. Um, for Uhuru Kenyatta, 
um, you know, there's a lot of vested interests around his government and, and him being in power. So again, very difficult to see him conceding. So it's it's a it's a, it's a it's a really difficult situation. But we can only hope as Kenyans that um, whoever wins this election will win it by a reasonably good margin. I think the worst case scenario is if it's a very tight um, result, and that then will lead to. Um, a lot of a lot of dispute and a lot of allegations of rigging. For those who have not followed this election, what was the key issue? What was the plank on which these two front runners ran? You know, they really uh, the economy was one of the big talking points. But actually, as again you pointed out very clearly in your report, um, everyone votes on tribal lines. There's really you know there's not an agenda-based election. We've never had an agenda-based election in this country where candidates have stood up and said, you know, we are standing for X, Y, and Z, we're going to change, you know, economy, we're going to look at health, we're going to look at um, food prices, we're going to look at inflation, unemployment. None of these things are brought up. It's all about, well, you know, we'll be a better president than the, ne than the, than the next guy, um, but that's also because we'll look after our own people. So it's a very, it's very tribal and, and very ethnic here. So this is this is the big concern that um, that we have is that there's not really an agenda based pol uh, 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 political scene here. One word on uh, the use of social media and how it has played a part or not played a part in this election. It's played a huge part. Social the Kenyans are very active on social media and um, and they're going to use it. Uh, you know, it's been used for fake news. Uh, enormous amount of effort and time seems to have been put in by a lot of different parties to distribute fake news, polling, fake polls, fake um, um, uh, uh, news reports, even copying CNN and BBC. Uh, so a lot of time and effort has gone into doing that and spreading bad information um, using Facebook and uh, Twitter and, uh, and WhatsApp. So that's one of the concerns and one that the Electoral Commission will have to look at uh, for the future. And I wouldn't be surprised if they shut some of this down, should things start getting uh, going a little bit wrong uh, over the next couple of days. And just to put it in perspective for our viewers, how does what happens in Kenya impact the rest of Africa? Uh, well, you know, Kenya has always been is one of the strong economies on the continent, along with South Africa and Nigeria. Um, it's it's the biggest economy in the region. Um, again, as you pointed out, so there is a lot of impact. Uh, here in 2008, you know, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda all struggled when we had the post-election violence here. So it has a major effect on, on how things are looked at. And obviously, you know, as Africans, we want to start now looking beyond, um, beyond um, uh, people talking about bad elections. You know, if elections happen everywhere in the world. They seem to happen fairly smoothly. And we really need to get away from this this idea that uh, that whenever there's an election in an African country, you know, things uh, everyone expects the worst and uh, things kind of grind to a halt six months before and six months after and the economy kind of winds down and, and, and people really struggle uh, in the in the election year. So we, we need to get away from that cycle. But it is eagerly being looked at uh, around the continent uh, today. Right, Salim, I mean, thanks very much. It was good to talk to you. The results expected uh, uh, soon, but this is an election that uh, was watched closely, not just by the international community. India has a special interest in what's happening in Kenya, and here's why. India and Kenya share a long history with both politically and culturally uh, since both uh, were under the British colonial rule, Africa has natural resources in abundance and being a stable economy in the volatile region, Kenya is often seen as a land of opportunity by India. Trade and commerce between the two countries has evolved in recent times. India has emerged as one of the top commercial partners with bilateral trade worth $2.3 billion with Kenya. Kenya being a member of the East African community can also leverage, uh, be leveraged rather, to expand India's footprint in the region and uh, there's a there's a large number of indians who also live in that country so a lot of interest in that election we'll track the results for you still ahead on this show why disney has been dragged to court for spying on your child